Deportiva y con suite. Deportiva y con suite. La factoría del deporte de este New York para ti es una máquina. Es una máquina. Pensada para ti. Pensada para ti. Número uno en las redes sale la que Con informaciones importantes siempre frescas. Y con entrevistas que te ponen de cabeza. Lo mejor del deporte lo encontrarás aquí. Búscale en las redes, dale la que compartir. Suscríbete. Ay sí. Infórmate. Ok. Can you just go over that a bit? And secondly, can you talk about Devis? How has he impressed you all season? Um, first off, that a bat runs in the corners, one out, series winning run at third base. Um, so I was about to walk to the plate. They called Christian back to the dugout, and they. They brought in Danny, and that that took a little bit of pressure off, because obviously there are different types of runners. And um, at the time, I was like, a homer scores Christian. <laughs> no, uh, uh, it, it went it went from uh, from having to get a hit or feeling like I have to get a hit, obviously, because uh, their their outfield throws pretty well, especially their center fielder, right fielder, um, and then having the faster runner at third base, kind of you know. Took the pressure off, you know. Obviously, I don't have to do that much. I just have to get a pitch where I can, you know, hit a fly ball and, and score. I'm not not trying to do too much, and uh, I'm glad I was able to get that pitch. And I was, uh, I'm glad I was able to get the job done. And um, your other question, um, I mean, Rafi, when I signed here and I start, I, I, I looked at the roster and I started looking at, at at their pages and their profiles as far as like whatever their stats and I was like I was beyond impressed with our third base side of our infield I was like how come nobody talks more about these two guys like these numbers are ridiculous like nobody's talking about them and um, you know being in the being in the National League especially in the West Coast you you never get to see them play or or really pay attention to what's going on in the American League and I knew they were good players but I didn't know they were that good and um Spring training was a it was a pleasure to watch those two guys, um, you know in the batter's box they're they're as dangerous as they get and you know it, it was it was fun seeing them how 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 they prepared and, and how they they went about their business and getting to know them was it was a pleasure and getting to to to, to see Rafi for 162 was was special and then you know. People are talking about what's going on with him and his health and all this, but he keeps finding a way to get the job done, and, and, and he came up huge for us tonight, and I'm glad he had the night he had. Uh, Tyler in the fourth row. TK, this team had a really, really tough year last year in the 60-game season. Um, what was it, besides the chance to play every day, that made you think that you could win here, that, made you, that attracted you to Boston? I looked at the roster, man, and to be honest, as, as, as far as position players, the pitching staff was like, it, it, it took some time to get developed as far as, like, we brought in some, some pieces and and, uh, and and there were some guys that I didn't know, obviously, because playing in the other league, but when you look at the roster and you see Rafael Devers and, like, I started looking at their stats and stuff, and I was like, Xander Bogarts and um, first base, and I started looking about, you know, Bobby Dalbeck and all, everybody talking about what his potential was like and then I've known Christian I put with Christian when I was seven years old in Puerto Rico he was he's a year older than me and he was he I mean we, we played the same category and he was a year older than me obviously but we were on the same team and I mean he's always been a stud ever since we were that old that young he, he was he's always been a stud and then I uh, obviously I played with Doogie for a few years in, in in LA and I played against Ren for for a few years when he was with the Padres and I was like man like I don't understand why people are talking about this team like, you know, we're the worst team in that division or, or, or whatever. And I was like, this is a solid squad. You know, they, they, they won the World Series a few years ago. They know what it takes to win. Like, it's not like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a scrappy roster or anything. It's a, it's a good roster. Um, I played with Nate in Miami, and obviously I saw what Nate did in the playoffs in 18. And I saw it firsthand when he pitched against us. Um, you know, I, I knew that we had a really solid team. and. The same thing I said in spring training. I, 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 I mean, I, 
nothing has changed. I, I, I thought that we're, all we needed to do was survive till we got sailed back and, and then we would become a really dangerous team. And that's basically what we did. And then there were some guys that I didn't know that came through and, you know, we have a, we have a team with a really, with a bunch of really, really good baseball players that know how to play the game. And I mean, here we are surprising everybody but ourselves. We, we knew in spring training we had the team to, to make it this far, and here we are. Second row on your right. GK, before the, uh, before the, um, the series started, someone asked you about, being, uh, about wanting to be up. You talked about wanting to be up in those situations. Can you kind of go through in your mind at the start of that inning what you're thinking about counting the batters and, and what situation you might be in, and how much has the success that you've had in this series make you that much more confident to come up in that spot? Um, so I had the chance to win the game last night, and I didn't do it. Um, and I was thinking, I was thinking to my, I was thinking walking to the plate. I was like, I'm about to finish this game. This was last night, and I was like, and the way that things were going at the time, I was like, I'm about to make this place my, you know, my place. Um, but but uh, um, that's 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 my 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 me talking to myself to like pump me up to like get my confidence up and like to keep things under control and um, I didn't get it done last night and we won the game Christian Christian came through um, and tonight I knew that I was up fourth in the inning and I I, I knew that if, if I was going to get up to the plate it was going to be with runners on obviously because if there's nobody on it, it it meant that we had somebody had hit a homer or something and we won the game so Jogging from center field to, to, to the dugout, I jogged a little slower than, than I usually do because I usually get 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 on the field and off the field pretty quick because I just want to get there and get out. You know, turn the pace. We're, we're offense. Turn the pace. We're on defense now. And I was just talking to myself. I was like, "All right, we. This is our chance. You know, if you get up to the plate, you're gonna have a chance to win the game, and you cannot let, let the situation get too big, and, and you need to." You're about to win this game, so you need to work on like slowing everything down and slowing your breathing down and slowing the game down and you know starting early and seeing making sure that you see the pitch and you're not just swinging out of your shoes for for no reason for trying to be a hero and um, the situation you know the the way that the, that inning developed Christian you know he at the beginning of the at bat didn't seem like he had a he didn't seem like he had a chance and then he started battling and he won the at bat and then Arroyo. I don't know if that was the first bunt of the year, but man, that was a hell of a bunt. And then T. Shaw put up put up a battle up there, and never thought. I, I told him. I told him a few minutes ago. I was like, I, I didn't. I never thought that your speed was the one that's going to win us this series. And um, for him to, you know, grind that up bat out, and then, you know, some people, you know, when they come off the bench in, in a big situation, and they 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 hit the ball with the quality of contact that he did, they kind of get upset or whatnot, and then not run hard down the line and he didn't do that he he capped it and he just busted his ass at the first base and he you know the throw happened and he beat the throw and on the first pitch he took second which even took my my, my pressure off a little bit because I was like man if I had a hard ground ball like there's a chance that they can turn two and innings over and he got on second base after the first pitch which I swung on a pitch that might have been over my head I don't know it felt really high and I was like what are you doing but he went on second base, and I was like, all right, now you really got to slow this down because it, it, it just got a little bit easier. It, and, uh, you know, I was able to get the pitch that, that that allowed me to hit a fly ball to left, and I'm glad I hit it to the to their weak, weakest arm in the outfield. Uh, Ian, up front, the chat. Uh, Kike, after they scored the five, <laughs> you know, to, to tie it up, how much did Garrett kind of just swing the momentum back in your guys' favor? Just how impressed are you just by what he's done, uh, not just tonight, but all year? Man, I mean, at the beginning of the year, we're, people still call him the secret weapon. I mean, it's no secret anymore. Garrett Whitlock is legit. I mean, that is an electric arm with three-plus pitches. And at his age, with his, with his experience coming into the year, you know, it's not every, every day that a Rule 5 draft pick gets to close out a walk-out game and then win a game that that uh, wins a, not just a division series, but a playoff series. I don't, you don't see that every day. And 
his composure, his his stuff, his the way he prepares, the way he goes about his business, you know, it's as professional as it gets and the only time that you remember that Whitlock is a rookie is when he comes and asks you a question where, you know, it's a it's a question that a younger guy would ask and it's like, dang, I it seems it's so easy to forget that he's this young and that he has this amount of experience because he just he just gets the job done day in and day out and it never seems like the situation's too big or the game speeds up on him. It's just he stays under control and he's got a great right arm and I mean I'm glad he's on our side and not on the other guy's side. And so uh, Garrett Whitlock's been a huge, huge piece for us this year and for years to come. Uh, the other back on the left, Chad. Kike, picking up what you said, um, wanting to make this place yours, uh, how would you put into words having back-to-back walk-off wins, back-to-back nights as a Red Sox in front of these fans at Boston? This place is special. and. I'm glad it took this long for me to realize that because at the beginning of the year, it just, you know, I, I played here two series. I mean, I played here the World Series for the first time in my career, and then in 19, we started the second half. I think we started the second half here. And, you know, when, when you're on the road, you don't really realize, like, unless the place is, like, crazy loud or whatever, you don't really realize how loud it is. And when we came in the World Series, like, things did not go our way, the two games that we played here. And, like, I didn't even have time to, re- to like, think about how loud this place was, mainly because it was way too cold. I was like, oh, my goodness. We just went from, like, 80-degree weather to, like, 30-degree weather because those, ga- those two games here were freezing. So I never really had time to think about it. And then 19, the team wasn't playing that great. So, like, and we won that series. So it, we didn't – we never allowed them to, to – to get that loud and it was I don't I don't even remember when it was that we got 100% capacity back but like once we got that 100% capacity back like you just felt it you know you just couldn't wait to to, for 710 to to come to like get going and start a game especially when like when when we play better teams and um, this place gets rocking man this place gets rocking and this place is a lot of fun to play in and not that fun to play in when you're when you're a road team, and that gives us a little bit of an advantage. And I'm glad I'm I'm wearing white when we play here. Yeah, two more quick ones, Chad and Emma. You guys, you're using a lineup that you haven't used all year. The pitching staff's obviously being used differently. You're bunting. I <laughs> can talk about that. I mean, just Alex manages so much differently in October, but his teams this year and a couple of years ago seem to respond to that. I, I wonder if you don't have a feel of why that is. Why why is it? It's so much different, but you guys are kind of playing your best right now man it's October like it doesn't matter what happens all that matters is get that W and I mean you've seen it like all these all the starters that they're not starting that game they got cleats on and they're in the bullpen and they're ready to go and like that's our mentality and that's that's the mentality that good teams have and that's what it takes to win like whatever it takes to win and like when you have that mentality Good thing, good things tend to happen, and I mean that's 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 our motto right now. Whatever it takes to win, and just win today, and we'll worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, and I mean, lineup, bullpen, starting rotation, like it doesn't matter. We're a team, and we're one. We're not 26 dudes. We're just one. We're one. We're collective, and you know, we're when things don't go our way, we're gonna pick it, we're gonna pick each other up, and when when things go our way, we're gonna have hype each other up to you know to to make ourselves feel good and, and make that that uh, really good confidence, good field last longer and. I mean, we're playing really good baseball right now, and mm, that's all that matters. We we just we we celebrated, quote unquote, three times, and we're looking forward to celebrating two more times. We'll finish with Emma in the back left. Kike, what does it mean to to be where you are, are as a team right now, and to have had the season you've had individually after being given an opportunity to show what you can do as an everyday starting player, and just to show what you can do when you can play every day? Um. First question. I mean, feels great. I mean, no, no, no lie. It feels great. I mean, going into spring training, we we all we would all say that you know we have the team to, to get to October to get deep into October, and people would kind of like look at us through Zoom. Obviously, we look at us like we're crazy, and you know we we didn't really cared what 
people outside our clubhouse thought about us or as a team and we we knew what we had in our hands and it was a matter of us taking care of business about controlling what you can control and you know the season was one giant roller coaster but it was a fun roller coaster even when times weren't that fun and you know we 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 had first place for a long time and then we started playing not so great and then Tampa like took over first place and then they they took off and we started playing up and down up and down up and down up and down and you know people are like oh real Red Sox are showing the true colors or whatever and we just didn't care we knew that like a 162 game season it was about you know ups and downs and like it, it was about not riding the highs too high and the lows too low and I think we did a heck of a job not letting you know the the struggles get to us and you know just keeping our head up and looking forward you know if we didn't win today we were looking forward to tomorrow and so on and you know we were able to to come into to, to the last three games of the season that mattered and you know we took care of business even it was it was a really fun series it felt like a playoff series even though the other team wasn't didn't even have a winning record but they played like a playoff team at the time and um, we took care of business and then going to the Yankees Walker game you know it was it was fun it was it was loud here it was electric and you know going into Tampa game one it was kind of like a we got punched in the gut and it was a matter of like are we gonna turn the page or are we gonna you know just feel sorry for ourselves and that's how teams get swept and we we did a great job at turning the page and and winning the next three and for me personally like free agency main priority was finding a place where I could play every day but I didn't want the easy way playing every day I didn't just want to play every day to play every day in the big leagues I, just, I wanted to play every day where where it mattered and I I, I told my mom I was like yeah there's nothing there's nothing that compares to winning the World Series but I want to go somewhere where I can win the World Series and like be in that starting lineup every day and you know it's it feels like I'm a little bit more important piece than than just one more guy on that team and um, Boston ended up being the, the, the greatest of fits and I don't regret that decision one bit. We'll finish up with Tyler in the aisle there. You just, uh, Kevin Cash was saying that uh, we just were not able to create that swing and miss that we did so well during the regular season. He said it was just a relentless lineup, the constant pressure. I mean, that is a good, good uh, pitching step over there. How did you guys, how were you able to make contact as much and have those at bats, and how big a factor was that in the series for you? I think, I think the biggest difference between this series or like game two, three, four, and the regular season was that we knew what like we knew it was it would take a collective one through nine to get the job done. You know, in this regular season, it felt like we had a really talented lineup, and it was just a matter of like, you know, getting big hits and all that, and getting hot or whatever. But everybody had an individual approach, and it was different. And we just, you know, going down the series one nothing. It's just like we need to find a way to have a, a one through nine approach. We need to have a team approach, and we need to all get on the same page and, and do the same thing and, and attack the same way. And that's kind of what we did. And, you know, playoff baseball, sometimes, you know, if, if you don't let the moment get too big, it kind of brings the best out of people. And, you know, we, we were able to, to lock it in and, you know, m make better decisions at the pitches that we wanted to swing at, we wanted to attack, when the zones that we wanted to attack. And, um, you know, we started off with game two and kind of like went on the next two games. And, um, I mean, we did a great job as an offense, but our pitching, kept us in the game every game. And if it wasn't for pitching, this series would have looked a lot different. So, uh, you know, hats off to, to tip of my cap to those guys, kept us in the game at times. And when the other games, when, you know, when, 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 like tonight, when we were up five and we gave up that lead, you know, it was time to lock it in and, and, and they kept them there. They didn't, you know, it was on us to not add on and, and, and tally onto that lead and, you know, we, we gave it up. So so what? You know, let's let's keep him there now and, and, and just give ourselves a chance to, to win this ball game and, and that's what they did and you know the rest is history.
Go Villa, Pedro Martínez, Dominican Power, all the way up, okay? La máquina de esportiva.